السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. It's a great pleasure to be here with everyone. Alhamdulillah. And the fact that we're seeing many of the faces that I haven't seen for a very long time and give me a lot of joy, Alhamdulillah, to see everyone. I didn't come to Allentown for a while actually. I almost forgot when the last time I came. So, Jazakumullah khair to, uh, for inviting me. It's a pleasure being here. And Jazakumullah for the brothers that have uh, organized this. Um, it's very beautiful, mashallah. Right now, one of the very common, since the, you know, the hardest, I was just telling Brother Imran, the hardest subject matters a speaker gets is you speak whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the, the most hardest subjects. So, thinking about it right now, one of the most relevant issues for us is the aspect of Turkey and Syria and the earthquakes that took place. It's very saddening. It's a very, very, it's a trauma on the entire Ummah actually. And <clears throat> Muslims have overnight become poor. I received a message today, one person was saying that my landlord in Turkey, my landlord has increased my rent and I didn't have enough money, I couldn't afford the increase, so he told me to leave. And he'll have, which is the typical uh, tradition when it comes to paying rent. He says right now, my landlord and I, and I left from there, but my landlord and I both are in the same re same refugee camp, same tent. So people become poor overnight in this manner. Which actually brings us to this reality that our money is very temporary. Any minute we can become poor. And this money is, there's no guarantee that we'll be happy for the rest of our lives, we'll be wealthy for the rest of our lives. It can happen to us. So anyway, this incident that has taken place, three earthquakes, one after another, two in the same day, and the next day, the other, and the next one, seven, when it goes above seven degrees, then, buildings are bound to fall. We hear people saying that maybe the infrastructure or the buildings were not built well and so on and so forth. This is not the case. When an earthquake is of that level, it's bound to fall. So, people went through, are going through great trauma. MashaAllah, Muslims throughout the world are sending their aids but what is necessary for us to learn and focus on some points that we need to keep in mind actually because right now it has become a aqida issue for us we human beings when we go through difficulty like the youngster was reciting mashallah from surah al-fajr allah ta'ala says fayaqulu rabbi ahanan fayaqulu rabbi akraman Allah Ta'ala gives us bounties, we say, Allah is honoring me. When Allah Ta'ala takes away the bounties, we say, Allah is disgracing me. Whereas we're supposed to be grateful to Allah Ta'ala in every condition. There was a king once, he became upset with one of his wazir, one of his uh, court members. We say parliament members. The individual was very close to him, served him all the time. So he became upset with him and he said, feed him to the dogs. So he, they put the, this wazir to the dogs to eat and the dogs don't want to eat him. The hungry dogs, they don't want to eat him. So he asked another khadim, what's going on? And what happened was, these dogs, the, the wazir used to once, once in a while 
go feed these dogs so the dogs recognize him. There's one, two days ihsan that he did, the dogs recognize him, they don't want to eat him. But this man done you good all, his, all your life and suddenly you became upset, now you want to feed him to the dogs. <laughs> so, Allah Taala has given us bounty every second of our life. Allahu Akbar. All the time. And once, when Allah Ta'ala's ni'mah is, is it manifests in a way that may be a little bitter to us, now we question the decree of Allah Ta'ala, the decision of Allah Ta'ala. And we say this is evil. فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا I've heard with my own ears, just the other day, one brother sitting right in front of me, and I had to make him repeat his kalima. Saying that I'm upset and I'm sad upon Allah that He had to do it to the Muslims. Question. Such questions against the decree of Allah. You see, what is evil? Bad and good. Everything is from Allah. Ta'ala. The fact that we call something bad, the fact that we call something good, is, is subjective. It's, it's based on our perspective. What you think is bad, what you think is good. If a lion eats up a human being who's just walking around doing nothing but just doing his business. But the lion was hungry, came, ate him up. So our perspective is, oh, oh the lion ate up a human being. That was very bad. So they're going to come, the rangers are going to come, they'll shoot the lion down and kill him. Right? But from the lion pride's perspective, we had dinner. It was something really good. We did. We actually caught a hunt. We did, you know, the, the rest of the lions will tell him, Bravo, you uh, got us something different instead of a uh, deer this time. The meat tastes better. You know. It's a matter of perspective. He was just doing what he was supposed to do. For you and me, it's a bad thing. If you <coughs> kill John walking on the road, you are a murderer. You have done something bad and you should go to jail and you should go through all the consequences. If you killed Hitler, you're a hero. Right? If you killed Hitler, you caught Hitler and you killed him. Now what are you? You did the same action, but on one perspective you became a criminal and from another perspective you became a hero. Doing the same exact thing, taking somebody's life. So this bad and good in life is our perspective and we always look at things from our own specs. We need to understand it from the Khaliq specs, so to say. From the Creator's specs. What is He looking at? How does He see? We will never understand the hikmah and the wisdom of Allah Ta'ala in someone having cancer. That's why one of the great saints and scholars of the recent past he used to make dua when he would get sick. He would say that, Oh Allah, the ni'mah and the, and the bounty of yours, of sickness, please change it into the bounty of health. It's very difficult to, for us to bear. Both are ni'mah, actually. And we just don't understand. We just need the time to ponder. So this earthquake that's happening here is also a ni'mah of Allah It's just that we don't see it. In one hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, in my ummah, Allah Ta'ala, this ummah, ummatun marhuma. Narration of Tirmidhi also. Imam Tirmidhi said the hadith is sahih. This ummah is ummatun marhuma. It's a, an ummah upon which Allah's special mercy is on. And what is the manifestation of this mercy of Allah Ta'ala? He will not punish this Ummah in the Akhirah. No punishment in the Akhirah. So then, what will happen? We will also do sins. Guna. Then another hadith that Allah wa Ta'ala, when a mu'min believer does a guna a sin, Allah wa Ta'ala gives him chastisements in dunya and finishes off his bad deeds in dunya and يَدَّخِرُ لَهُ حَسَنَاتِ Good deeds, Allah saves it for him, for the Akhirah. 
But a kafir, when he does a good deed, عَمِلَ حَسَنَةً أُطْعِمُ بِهَا تُعْمَةً مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Allah Ta'ala gives him all his rewards in dunya, right here. Ajila. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi further in that hadith, he says that Allah Tabarak Wa Ta'ala will give things like natural disasters to the ummah to forgive them in the dunya so that he does not have to punish them in the akhirah. Let's imagine the amount of guna and sins. And by the way, we don't think, or maybe sometimes we do say the Qiyamah's day is very close, but our actions act like it's very far. Our actions show that it's very, very far. I'm not going to say close or far, because Allah knows best when it's going to come. But the truth is, there are a lot of earthquakes, but before the day of Qiyamah, amongst the minor signs of the day of judgment, is not just earthquakes. In the hadith of Aisha anha, also narrated by Imam Tirmidhi, she says that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in this ummah of mine, there will be khasfun wa maskhun wa qadfun. Three things he said. There will be ground people, people will be eaten up by the ground, like your quicksand thing. Suddenly the ground will just open up, not just quicksand. And it will just eat up everything. Gone like Karun style. And there will be maskhun. That before the day of Qiyamah, people will start to turn into monkeys and pigs. Allah Ta'ala's punishments will come in such bad forms. I don't mean to scare anybody, but these are realities. These are mentioned in the hadith, signs of the day of Qiyamah. And then there will be stones being rained upon earth. Like the people of Lut there were stones being rained upon them. These types of things will happen before the day of Qiyamah. So Aisha, anha, she asked, and there are two different narrations. One narration was of Aisha in the same similar words. Aisha narrates. She said, Anahlik wafina salihum, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, are we going to get destroyed? Even there are pious people among us? The Prophet said, Yes. And then later Allah will judge you based on your intentions after you after you die. But when it will come, it will take the salihin as well. Another narration, and this is the interesting part. Of another individual, Irbab bin Sariya narrates this narration. He says there's another person asked when the Nabi, when the Nabi of Allah said this in the masjid. <coughs> now someone asked, Ya Rasulullah, when will this happen? And he said these words. إِذَا ظَهَرَتِ الْقَيْنَاتُ وَالْمَعَازِفُ وَشُرِبَتِ الْخُمُورِ Allah. When they will be dancing, music very common. And people will drink khamar as a normal thing, like water. They will drink wine like normal. Everybody will have wine in their homes, like as if they have juice. That's when this will start happening. The manifestation of this is having clubs everywhere. Nightclubs, what are they doing? They're doing all these three things. Zina and haram going on. And, you know, one day, in the time of Umar ibn Khattab, Mount Uhud started shaking. He was walking on it, Mount Uhud started shaking. And he hit the mountain with his staff. And he said, don't you dare move again, there is justice upon you. Ever since then, the Medina no more zalzala. Medina never moved again. Until the day of Qiyamah, just before the day of Qiyamah, when Medina and Makkah will have a shake, because of which Munafiqin will have to run out. They will run out and only true believers will remain in Medina and Makkah. This is one of the signs of the day of Qiyamah. Just before the day of Qiyamah, it will happen like this. And that's when the Dajjal won't be able to enter Makkah or Medina. So when there is justice, when there is Adil, when there is Deen on earth, this stuff won't happen. But these are signs of the sins of the Ummah. And don't think that it only happened to people of Turkey or people of Syria, it happened to them, we're safe. This is something that came upon me, you, the whole Ummah. This is all our musibat. Al-mu'minuna ka jasadin wahid. 
إذا اشتكى كله اشتكى بعضه اشتكى كله. That if some parts of the body feel pain, the whole body will feel pain. So narration is come تدا على سائر الجسد بالسائر الحمى. So first of all, when it comes to the aspect of Syria and Turkey, we have to accept the decree of Allah. This is Allah's decision. And in Allah's decision, there's only hikmah. There's only wisdom. And Allah, wa ta'ala, this is Allah, the manifestation of Allah's mercy on this ummah. And the mercy of Allah ta'ala can sometimes destroy Pharaoh. Right? It destroys evil. And sometimes it makes a person like Muhammad Rasulullah. Manifestation of the mercy of Allah is something that is beyond our understanding. Secondly, we have to correct our aqaid regarding this. Secondly, we have to lament and contemplate over our sins, our guna, our life filled with guna and sins. And these things that we have committed are causing these things, these types of natural disasters in the world. The ummah collectively needs to make tawbah to Allah. We all need to make tawbah to Allah. Istilfar. Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam would make istilfar a hundred times every day. What was it that he was making istilfar from? What was he asking Allah to forgive him about? What was it all about? So obviously, if he's making istilfar a hundred times with no sins, you can imagine how many times we should make istilfar with so much sins. And finally, obviously as Muslims, we need to understand that this difficulty has come upon all of us. It is not just the people of Turkey. It has come on the entire ummah. Muslims in general and obviously finally as much as we can when we will feel the pain if my son and daughter are going through pain I'm going to put money into it to take away their pain take them to the doctor put some effort whatever we can we must help out the people over there and I'm sure everyone is doing that in that regard so the matter of Syria and Turkey uh, I just like, I wanted to highlight that because it is a very, very serious matter and a trauma for the Muslims because we're starting to question our beliefs also. A lot of people having trouble coping with this, that it happened to such a country like Turkey. Turkey is a very, very, very good country, somewhere people want to move into nowadays. And it is the place where President Erdogan is one of the only individuals that speak up very boldly against all the dhulm and oppression of the world. But that doesn't mean that now he's far away from Allah's mercy. Or those people. They're very, very great, pious people that were there that also were killed. And Nahliku, like Aisha says, when this comes, Salihin among us, we all get destroyed. Yes, we all get destroyed. So we need to ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive us. To save us from all these types of calamities, calamities that can come upon all, all of us. Allah Ta'ala mentions after he mentions the about the people of Lut, after that he says that uh, this type of punishment is not far away from the people who are oppressors. From the oppressors is not far away. So we should never think that okay. I hear some people say that that um, you know these types of things is far fetched in the USA because you know uh, um, scientifically based on ge geography the, the the lands over there the plates are pretty good whatever the case is but it's not far away it can happen to us it can happen to everybody anybody that's why we have to understand that it happened to the entire ummah Allah Taala protect us protect the whole ummah and keep us with iman and afiyat. Amen. Amen.